Welcome to St. Paul's Devotion this Wednesday evening. I'm Pastor David Ernest. Glad that you're able to join us again. We've been looking at Psalm 46, or I've been using the words of Psalm 46 to direct our attention to what God has done for us and his promises to sustain us. And I want you to think a little bit tonight about what it is that we put our confidence or our strength in. Sometimes people do that by making sure that they've got their retirement plan planned out. They've got all their all their investments and everything lined up so that when they're done putting money in, it'll take care of them. And, and as long as that's there, they're pretty safe and secure. Some, perhaps as a student, well, I've got all my extra credit done. I've, I've got all my assignments done, and so I know I'm going to get a good grade. I don't have to worry about anything. Uh, there's other ways that people put their trust in the things that they've done in the past. Maybe they're well known for something or they've done well enough that people will say, yeah, that person's pretty good and they doesn't have to do anything anymore. And if you look at recent, uh, recent, uh, TV programs, uh, there's some that, that put in the survivor idol that as long as they've got that idol, they're safe from being voted out of the tribe. Or if you're a Lego fan like myself, that golden brick says, all right, I'm going to be safe from elimination. As long as I've got that, don't have to worry. Those are all places that people will put their trust. They'll say, well, I've got this as a backup. Some people use God or God's word that way. They say, well, I've studied God's word. Uh, I've gone to school with God's word. I even went to high school or even beyond that, looking at God's word. I know it pretty well. Or I've been confirmed. I had a good study for a couple of years and I've got the basis for what I need. Others will say, well, I, I've done or participated in things in the past. And so I know I've got everything that I need accomplished. Some people even say, well, my baptism. I'm good to go. I've been baptized and I don't have to worry about anything anymore. I, and that's their trust. We'll talk about that part in just a little bit. Some people are thinking that they've gone to church a couple times or they went to Christmas or hopefully Easter this year. And so they say their prayers. We can quote passages that, that pertain to nearly every circumstance in life. And we say, all right, I, I'm good. I'm taken care of. I'm fine. But where does your comfort come from when it's difficult each day? Sometimes we've built up our, our city, our walls, our, our stronghold that's built up on the things that we've done or who we are or, or perhaps our knowledge of something. And then when the tough times and difficult times of life come, we start to wonder, what's the value of that? Did that really do anything for me? I can't even remember some of that stuff. And so our stronghold isn't so strong. In fact, that's the way that armies or, uh, or countries would attack a stronghold, a, a city that had big walls or a castle even. You go back a little bit in history. They would lob everything they had at that wall or that city, and they would hope that people would just give up and leave that city, and then they could attack them that way. Or if the city was pretty well and the people were happy with their walls, they would they'd make sure they'd have enough supplies just to last for a while, their food or their plans, and hopefully a well that would provide them water. And then they could wait out the enemy, but the enemy would still be around and surround them, and eventually... They would run out of things. In our psalm, our psalmist and God, therefore, tells us about where the strength actually lies. Is it built on the things that we've hold up for ourselves? My knowledge of this or that, my, my circumstances of life? Listen to verses 4 and 5. And we'll start with verse 4. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. To get the picture of what God, to get the picture, we look first at what God calls us. And there he calls us a city, the city of God. And that's a great picture throughout scripture as God talks about us as believers. 
as Zion, as Jerusalem, as New Jerusalem. That picture of that city that is God's. We get the picture of what God plans. So what does he tell us that he plans or builds a city around? Well, he says his Holy Spirit works and builds that city in us when he brings us to faith. The Holy Spirit works that trust in what Jesus has done for us on the cross. That he has taken away all our sin and made us a new creation, a holy city. There are a lot of people that think that they can build their city first. I can make my plans, make my ideas, and then I can ask God into my city. Well, that doesn't provide much comfort, does it? How were all those foundations built? How were all those walls put together? Where were those supplies coming from? If I have to first make sure everything is lined up right, then I start to wonder, did I do it right? Is that really me trusting in God if I'm asking him to do something for me? Instead, God's picture is him building the city. He builds us. He puts that faith in. He tr- He promises to be with us. And the Holy Spirit then works. What did he say? There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. You see, the focus isn't on the city and all the defenses that we built up and how good we plan to be. It's what God pumps in, what God provides to that city, a river whose streams. There isn't a better picture in Scripture than the water of life that Jesus is and provides. It doesn't come to the woman at the well because she thinks what she needs and so she gets it. It doesn't come to the woman who had set up all her plans and priorities and then says, I want that water. No, the water of life was Jesus right there with her. In fact, just like Pastor Vic made mention, don't be afraid. I've got this. It's the promises that God provides and what he provides for our nourishment that are the streams. Think of that stronghold, that that wall, that, that city that's all walled in. If it just has one little bitty well or one bucket of water, it's not going to last very long, even if it thinks its walls are strong. But if it has a stream, if it has a river that will always provide them fresh water, then they will be fine no matter what goes on outside of that city. And that's the picture that God is providing for us. He provides what we need. So as the world goes around and says, you got to get this taken care of, you got to purchase and have all these backed up in your house. You got to have your plans for how your life is going to go. You got to make sure that your kids do this and your kids do that. God just says simply, look at what I've provided for you. I've provided my word. And so instead of using God's word as a, here's my picture of what I want God to do for me, and this is what he promises, and I want this to work out, we instead say, God, what do you want me to hear? Maybe sometimes I need to hear that I've built up my walls and I put my strength in other things. Maybe it's my comfortability or my assurance that I've got the best way and no one else knows how to do this. All those other things, God says, don't put your trust in them. Look at the river and the stream that I have provided for you and I will take care of you. Trusting what God says then about our baptisms, not my idea of what a baptism is, a one-time action that that I did or asked for something, but what God tells us, that it is a, a water of life. It washes away our sins. It connects us to Jesus, not with my thoughts, but his plan. And he tells us that washes away my sins so that I know what he has done for me. Maybe we look at what God does for us through the Lord's Supper. The promises that Jesus makes that this is for the forgiveness of my sins, that it is his body and blood. Instead of me trying to figure out how am I going to do this or am I good enough for God or or did I repent or did I do this, we just simply trust that this is what God says about his word, about baptism, about the Lord's Supper. And then verse 5. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. 
Again, the reminder that God does not tell us to put our hope and trust in our defenses. It's not the city and all the things that we've built up. It's the promises of what God is doing. He is there. So how do we know that God is there? Well, we continue to look at his word. We want to hear it every single day. We want to make sure that we're listening to it and not dictating what God should do. And then God's promise will not fall. All kinds of things, especially as we looked in verse 1, how, how nature itself might be falling apart. God's still in control. And so she will not fall. Our trust our promises of what God has done for us through Jesus' life on death on the cross, it won't fall. And so let's put our priorities, establish them around where God is, to hear his word and to teach our children. And then God's promise, God will help her at break of day. That would be the time where the people would be expecting attacks because then the armies and could see and they would make sure that they, they could have all their stuff lined up, and that would be the time they'd be most worried. Now we can view attacks at just about any time because we can see in the dark. So God will help us at all time of the day. Wanting things done our way or the best way to continue the things that make us happy or to say, I need this to live or... I don't like it when so-and-so is doing something. Those are putting our trust in, in our walls and what we've built. But instead, continue to draw on the water of life. The streams that make us glad. New studies and new trust in God's word. So that it's not what I've done in the past or that I've learned, but that I continue to study and continue to hear again and again what God says. God will help. Not because we are right or we are special. It's because he promises to work. May that message go with us the rest of this week. We'll close with prayer. My loving and faithful God, you promise in your word that in all things you work for the good of those who love you, who have called you have called us into your kingdom through faith in Christ as our Savior. We ask that we would find in you the strength that we need each and every day. That it's not about the things that we've put together or the things that we've planned, but the promises that you make in your word. Help us see this vital stream and river of life that constantly strengthens us and provides us safety even when we seem to be surrounded. And then let us put our trust in your word as we go through life and continue to put that as a priority in our life. That we look to do those things that please you and support those things that give you glory. We ask this in Jesus' name, our Savior. Amen. And we also pray boldly and confidently as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Next time we'll look at verses 6 and 7. In the midst of turmoil and trouble by the things around us, we know that God comforts us and is our stronghold. Lord's blessings. Have a great day.